<laughs> some people loved it and some people hated it. But either way, we are going to talk about Tyler Perry's new movie, Divorce in the Black, from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this review, so go ahead and press pause. If you have not watched it, go on over to Amazon Prime, check it out, watch it, and then come back because you know we got some stuff to talk about in the comment section. So before I get into the five things that I want to talk to you guys about today, you know I'm going to give my final thoughts because I got some other things outside of the therapist's perspective that I want to talk to you guys about, about the storyline, about the plot, about my overall thoughts of the movie, so make sure to stay to the end for that too. But put in the comment section, are you one of the people who loved it or are you one of the people who did not like this at all? What were your thoughts about Megan Good, the acting, the storyline, the plot, all of the things? Tell me because I got some thoughts that I want to talk to you guys about too. The first thing that we got to talk about is who you marry matters. Bruh, I don't care if you have been with someone since y'all were teenagers, early 20s, high school, whatever the case may be, who you choose to marry matters. And we've seen this with Ava and Dallas throughout this whole entire movie. Just because you have history with someone does not mean that you should stay with them. There were so many red flags after red, and I'm talking about big red flags that Ava should have been like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not doing this no more because at this point, it's literally abuse. I know I've said this on my channel before. I come from the school of thought where the person you marry and also the person who you have children with, if you choose to have children, are probably the two most important decisions that you will ever make in your life. So getting married to someone will push you to your destiny. They can pull the greatness out of you. It can be amazing. But then on the flip side, if you marry the wrong person, they can pull you away and destroy you. And in this case, steal your joy. I've seen it done in real life and I've also seen it done countless times in movies, especially Tyler Perry movies, where people come in, they're happy, they are excited, they are joyous, all of the things, and then they get with somebody and it's abuse. They get with somebody and they pull them away from their destiny. They get with somebody and they're no longer the same person. This is a real thing. And if I'm being honest, outside of the abuse, Dallas was just downright embarrassing. He was loud, he was arrogant, he was drunk all the time. He, we couldn't take him nowhere to a restaurant. It was like, whoa, these are some major red flags. And Ava, AKA Megan Good was just, you know, pity patting around. Okay, sure, no problem. It's okay, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Eh, eh, eh. And it's just like, no, 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 no. You can't pacify this man. You cannot tiptoe around him because you are literally just making the problem worse. We've seen him be abusive in a number of ways. He was physically abusive to her. He was verbally abusive to her. The way he talked to her was just foul and outright wrong. And he was emotionally abusive as well. Like, oh, who you think you are? Oh, you did it. It's just like, hold on, sir. You're not going to talk to me like that. In addition to that, he was also very controlling. One moment it was cool. And the next minute it was like, this is what we're doing. You do what I say or else. And we all know that the cycle of abuse is a real thing that so many people go through and struggle with. While we're talking about marriage, Megan Good's parents, I don't think they were marriage goals. I mean, I know they've been together for a long time and they seem like the model, you know, couple, the model Christian couple. Dad was a pastor, mom was first lady, all of the things, but it seemed like they was giving some toxic Christianity as well. There is no way in God's green earth, whether it's true or not, that you will stand up at somebody's funeral preaching the eulogy and talk about how this person is going hell and their family is trash and they're wreaking havoc and you get what you deserve type of energy. That was just completely out of pocket. The way God does things with excellence and with integrity, he does not allow us to be out here saying things unruly. And we say, oh, you know, I just gotta say what the Holy Spirit is telling me to say. Is it really the Holy Spirit or is it some other spirit? Second thing I wanna talk to you guys about is generational patterns and cycles. And in this case, because it's a, a faith-based, what is it faith-based? No, nah, it's not really faith-based, but we know Tyler Perry operates with some type of Christian theme. I am going to go ahead and just say generational curses. We seen Dallas and his family Woo. Even though we didn't get the full story, which I'm going to talk about later, it seems like Dallas were perpetuating these same generational cycles and curses that his dad was doing on him and his siblings. At some point, he mentions, oh, she told me to kill my dad. 
wait, wait, what? Who told you to kill your dad? Your mama? Who? who? But he only said that once and they did not spin the block and circle back on that, which I had a problem with. Seems like his dad was physically abusive to his mom because at the end of this movie, when he got physically violent with Megan and put the scars and stuff on her face and y'all know how this ended, he said, I was trying not to be like my daddy and beat on you every day. So that tells us right there that there was physical abuse happening in his home with his mom between his parents. He saw that. His siblings saw that, which is probably why all of them were terrors. Kids are very intuitive. They know what is going on. So whether you're trying to hide it from them or not, or if it's even in plain sight, they can pick up on those things consciously and subconsciously. But we wonder why all of his brothers and him going around beating up everybody, got this, you know, S on their chest, like they hardcore. And the people in the town is kind of like, woo, don't mess with the Bertram boys because they are just a piece of work. Also too, can we talk about the mama? The mama was also very toxic. This should have been a big red flag to Ava, AKA Megan, when she acted a fool at their wedding. If you gonna be at the altar and slap down my bouquet in front of the whole entire congregation or ceremony or my attendees, oh, we got a problem. Guess what? Um, wedding canceled, cut this wedding. I'm not saying I do. <laughs> Don't you say I do to me either because I'm not marrying you or into this family based on how y'all are behaving. All of this leads to what? Y'all already know what I'm gonna say. Mommy and daddy issues. Mommy and daddy wounds that were unresolved within Dallas, that were unresolved with his siblings. Probably that was generational. And I can imagine that his mom and his dad or I can say his grandparents, they probably experienced some type of abuse as well. So these things and these cycles, they don't often just happen out of nowhere, even though they could. It is something that's generational that people have seen somebody else do and they think that it's okay. Because the alcoholism and the violence was a lot. Not to mention y'all pulling people out of the casket in front of everybody at the funeral, putting them in the back of the truck and then deciding to bury him on the... That was too much for me. Don't open a movie. I'm gonna talk about this later, but don't open a movie scene like that ever again, Tyler. Don't do it. The third thing we have to talk about is support systems. It is extremely important when you are going through a divorce to have people that have your back. And I'm so glad that Ava had a very strong girlfriend, okay? Her homegirl was that girl. I feel like her homegirl was me. <laughs> Cause I'm always the one that's gonna be like, uh-uh, you're not gonna talk to her like that. Who, who do you think you're talking to? Absolutely not, you better leave. Don't buck up against me one more time, what's up? And I'm not a violent person, but I protect those that I love. And I felt like her friend was very protective over her. And she was a good friend. She checked in on her, she called in, she showed up at the house. Hey girl, where you at? Do I need to drive over there? She did all of the things to make sure that her friend was taken care of. And I love that she had that type of support. One of the things that I thought that she did initially, I was like, oh girl, I don't know if this is a good idea, but why it wind up being a good idea was writing a letter. Well, not even a letter, but writing down all of the negative things that Dallas has done to Ava since she has known Ava. It looked like it was pages upon pages. It's like, oh, this is not gonna be good. Dallas is gonna find this letter at some point he's gonna read it and he gonna beat the heck out of Ava. Even though that did not happen and he wind up beating her for other reasons, I do think eventually that was the turning point for Ava. That was the thing that allowed her to say, wow, you're right. It's one thing to experience someone doing all of these things to you, but to read it in black and white, to read it on paper, to read it in my homegirl's handwriting to say, hey, this is what he's done to you and this is how it has impacted you just since I've known you. There's probably way more than this, but girl, you deserve more than that. Even though I don't feel like her parents were hashtag relationship goals or marriage goals, they were very supportive. They showed up, they pulled up, they allowed her to stay there. They talked to her, they loved on her, they made her food, they tried to counsel her, they prayed with her. They did all of the things that a parent could potentially do because we also know that Ava's grown, okay? This isn't a minor child who's experiencing this with a little boyfriend or something. This is a grown woman who can make her own decisions. And so while she had to make the decisions for herself, it was important to know that her mom and her dad was there for her in the way that they were. 
And Pops was about about it. He had guns. He pulled up to the house. Like, I installed a security system here. This is what you need to do. He put a safety plan in place, which is what we'll talk about shortly. But one of the things that I love that he did before I move on to the next point was that he ran the take back on Ava. I don't know if you guys really realize that. He watched all of this footage from when she was younger and she was in dance recital and track and field and she won all of these competitions and things of that nature when she was younger and she was so happy and joyous and exciting and she had this sense of life about her. But then he flipped the script and was like, but after you met him and married him, you didn't see that same smile on your face. You weren't excited anymore. You weren't happy about it. He stole your joy. I think experiencing that and her watching that and seeing how her parents' heart broke for her in addition to reading the letter that her friend gave her was the last straw for her. So moving on to the fourth thing is that when a woman's fed up, is that R. Kelly? We shouldn't be quoting R. Kelly, but when a woman's fed up, there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's what he said. And that's a real thing, especially in regards to divorce in the black. I've seen good women and also good men too, but for the sake of this movie, I've seen good women exhaust all avenues, do all that they can do, pour themselves out, give of themselves, try, try and try again. Just like Aaliyah said, dust yourself off and try again. She kept trying and trying and trying, but at some point, you only could take so much. It was clear that she had it because once a woman gives up and that's it, most of the times there isn't any backseats. You can't go back once she's done. And I mean, when she's done, done, because we've all went back and forth a little bit with a guy, you know, because we weren't sure. Oh, we love him. Blah, 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 blah. But when we are done, done, and we're like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Nine times out of 10, it's a wrap. We're not going back. Fortunately, that's when the partner, the mate, that's when Dallas, really kind of realized what he lost. He didn't really say that, but him seeing Ava with Benji, him seeing her sign them divorce papers so quick, without any questions, without any apprehension, her moving on with her life, that pissed him off. And he did this, I don't know if y'all noticed, he even these two fingers throughout the whole movie was killing me. I said, if you put them two fingers in somebody else's face one more time, I'm gonna put my two fingers in your face. It was like once he saw that she was moving on and getting back to work and doing better, he wanted to come back and wreak havoc in her life and that was not okay. Like we already mentioned, family, friends, those tapes, that letter was what fueled her to say no more. And unfortunately, I wish we would have seen something a lot deeper. I feel like there was a piece to the story, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, that was missing because it was just like one week you in love and you sad and you at your mama's house and you don't really wanna get a divorce and then the next week it's like, oh, I'm about about it, I'm signing these papers, I'm done with you. But we didn't see the emotional process outside of the tape, outside of the letter, but we didn't see the emotional process of what Ava, AKA Megan went through in order to get to that state. All we see was her parents try to help her to move on by introducing or reintroducing her to Benji and trying to set up these weird meetings at the food little grocery store or whatever, where they get food for the animals and all of those things. And you know, he's going to be at the carnival. So you going to be at the carnival, like having all of these setups. It's just like, why are y'all even doing that? Why are you doing that when she isn't technically divorced yet? Why are you doing that when you know she's not fully healed? Why are you trying to push her to move on to a relationship that she's not technically ready for? And Benji kept saying, oh, I know what it feels like to be divorced. I understand. Blah, 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 blah. I get that. And he was patient with her, but he still should have been like, nah, sis. <laughs> Just the other day, Dallas was at your job acting a fool. I can't get wrapped up into this foolery. He was so big on wanting to get Ava back that he just wanted to stay in her life at any cost. The fifth and last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is legal action before I give my final thoughts. I feel like this is where I'm gonna get real with you guys for a minute that there are so many people in real life who might have watched this movie who may be experiencing something like this for real in their real life and they are in Ava's situation. They're apprehensive. They're scared, they're nervous. They don't wanna get the police involved. They may not wanna get a restraining order. They're like, oh, I know him, he's fine. He ain't gonna do nothing. But you don't know what's going on with people, especially when there are substances involved, when there are generational patterns and curses, and you are leaving that person with their own thoughts. 
you never know what a person is capable of. So don't dismiss somebody's reckless behavior, their violence, their big red flags. That's just, oh, it's not a big deal. He'll be fine. He'll get over it. He just need a little bit of time. No, those are the cases that wind up on the news that says, this person murdered this person out of love. This is why we got shows like For My Man and we got shows, you know, where all of these people are crazy in love and they wind up killing their partner like a fatal attraction type situation. It's important to protect yourself. And I'm not talking about with guns and physical protection, even though that is important. You should know how to defend yourself. I like creating a safety plan. I love how her dad didn't physically do this, but he should have sat down with her outside of the guns and outside of the security camp and said, okay, hey, this is what we need to do. If this happens, call this number. If this happens, this is what needs to be done. This is what we do in therapy when someone is experiencing domestic violence. We create a safety plan. Who do you call? Where do you go? What do you take if you need to leave the house in a hurry? What do you need to pack? Have a bag ready? Go have money, have cash, so they won't be able to track your credit cards and your debit spending. These are all things that need to be in place if you are serious and for real about leaving an abusive relationship. I'm glad her friend was like, hold on, get that restraining order. <laughs> because what needs to happen is a paper trail. It's one thing to say, oh, he's been abusing me and he's been beating me, but you don't have any pictures, you don't have any evidence, you don't have any police reports, you don't have any records, you don't have any attempts of you trying to get the help. You have those things in place, it helps you to have a better case. It helps that restraining order or if something goes down and he does become physically um, abusive to you, you can say, oh, I got this restraining order. I called the police 20 times. Me and my kids went here. I have pictures of him hitting me and my wounds all of these things so now when there's a court case <laughs> hopefully it don't you know end in murder but if there's a court case you can defend yourself in writing you can defend yourself with a paper trail but in the black community we got this thing called you know snitches get stitches which basically means you can't snitch you can't tell you can't call the police because if you do, there's gonna be more harm happening to you. And I get that, right? I grew up in Compton, California. I understand hood stuff, but at the same time, we have to be smart about things. So my final thoughts on this, sit back for a cool little minute, okay? My final thoughts on this was, this movie was a six out of 10. Let me explain, because there are some of y'all that were like, oh my God, this is his best movie ever. I love this. And some of y'all were like, this was absolute trash or predictable and i understand all of those things when i i struggled to watch this movie y'all i review a lot of shows and i review a lot of movies on my channel and i can watch through them with ease i mean i've watched three hour interviews on club Shay Shay with ease right to do reviews for you guys but i watched the first hour on a friday <laughs> and then the next day i was trying to watch the second hour of it I will watch it for 10, 15 minutes and I get distracted and do something else. And I'm like, oh shoot, let me go back to the movie. So this, it couldn't, it didn't keep my attention. It was sad because I really love the actors that are in here. I think Megan Good is an amazing actor. I love Corey. I think that Debbie Morgan is amazing. We've seen her in Love and Basketball, right? Like I think these are amazing actors, hands down. But it was kind of like, what's going on with this? I think you have an amazing actor, you have an amazing cast, and you can bring out the best in them when the storyline is well thought out. I did not think that this storyline was well fleshed out. I had so many questions, as I already mentioned, like how did they meet? How long they been together? When did he start being an alcoholic and drunk and having these issues? Was it the whole time? Was it a few years ago? I had so many questions that I was just like, there's so many gaps and holes here. And I'm wondering if Tyler needs to bring in another writer to help flush out these ideas because I like character development. I wanna know a little bit of back history so I can just put all of the pieces together and then I can see them as a whole individual. I don't wanna get done with the movie and be like, so why did they do that? I, I don't get it, what's the point? I had that response a lot of times watching this movie. Essentially, I just felt like it was rushed. Like it was real quick. That scene from when they were at dinner, he said he wanted a divorce to her taking a week off and being at her mom's house. It was only a week 
But I feel like there was a long period of them doing all of the things without Dallas being in any of the scenes. And I'm like, when is Dallas gonna pop back up on the scene? Because this is taking a long time. One thing we know about Tyler Perry is that he has an audience. He has a loyal audience. No matter what he makes, what he creates, whether it's movies, whether it's series on OWN and BET+, whether it's his stage plays, whatever he creates, cartoons, he's doing all the things now. His people gonna watch. And I understand being loyal because we want black creators. We, he's doing something that nobody has ever done and at this point, right? And we wanna support that, but man, we, we gotta do a little bit better. And I hope that he cares enough to hear some of our, our woes and some of the things that we wanna see because it's like, wow, we don't want the same storyline, the same plot, the same trauma, the same wounded black woman, the perception of how black women are treated. We constantly see in that narrative. And I understand that negativity is what a lot of people like to watch. And that's more exciting than seeing somebody happy and joyous and content. And it's just a happy movie. I get that, but there has to be some switching and some changing up moving forward. One thing that I love before I end this is that every single actor that has ever worked with Tyler Perry that I have seen states that he is amazing to work with and that he pays them well. He pays their worth. Corey said it, Megan said it, Taraji said it. All of them said the same thing and they said, Tyler paid me more than anybody has ever paid me in my whole career. Whoa. And we know Megan been in the game for like 30 something plus years, right? So just now, 2024, for her to get paid her value and her worth for the first time, it's kind of heartbreaking to see that a lot of black actors are not bringing in the same money, the same, all of the things as their white counterparts when the talent is equal or in some cases better. Thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Please make sure to stick around, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to watch some other review videos on my channel for more movies and TV shows. And I will see you next time. Be blessed.